for the leader of the Angola Progressive Movement, and I've seen he have just been joined also by you know um, by the by one of the newest members of the team as well, who has been um, blazing a trail, sending shockwaves across the country. <laughs> um, and the diaspora as well, the young Kentish Rogers, um, she is here as well. So, um, brother, brother Doctor, what a so pleasant um, good morning to you, sir. Uh, good morning, Brother Hammer, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here every Thursday. Uh, yeah. You know, it seems like you keep up in the ante every time with the yeah, yeah, yeah. excitement, but the information <laughs> that goes out, it, it, yeah. it helps the people to make informed decisions. It does, it does, I want to say good morning to your listeners and yeah. here in Anguilla and abroad. Uh, and, and viewers as well. And, uh, and our viewers as well. And our viewers too. You know, and right? your viewers, that's yeah, right. Yeah, I keep yeah, forgetting yeah, that yeah, you yeah. got those <laughs> Facebook uh, cameras and uh, 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 the uh, watching and, and, and noting and, and uh, uh, you know, that's that's the way it should be. Yes. And I'll, I'll, I'll turn over to uh, Ms. Okay. Deanne and let her introduce herself. Uh, and right. Good morning to you. Good morning, Mrs. Kentish Rogers. Mr. Good morning. Good morning, Hama. Mm -hmm. And good morning to the rest of Anguilla tuning in this morning. Okay, and the, the last day she was here this year with me, brother, she um, she was, would have been getting ready for the Miss Angola pageant. Maybe I think it was uh, um, some time back. Now she's here as you know, as a politician, as a youth leader. Yeah, a youth leader. Community. All right. Mm -hmm. So, well, folks, uh, welcome to the program, and um, I'm sure that uh, Miss um, Deanne, we will have uh, uh, many more of these sessions here for mm -hmm. sure as we come down to the 2020 elections. I'll tell you that across Angola and the diaspora, um, mm -hmm. you know, um, you have, you have, we are being warmly received. I've, I've noted that even just a while ago when I mentioned to someone you were coming on here on the program, uh, and, and you know, the loud applause, the cheers from those Angolans overseas, really and truly. So mm -hmm. it is a good thing. It's, it's a good thing to have youth in the mix and a good thing to have someone of your, of your standing also really um, you know, in the mix as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, let's get on to it. Um, my brother and sister here in terms mm -hmm. of um, today. Um, um, what do you consider to be you know, the front-running issues today and if you wish to, to lead up on, um, Dr. Webster? Well, I just yeah. wanted to say, uh, yeah. you know, we had the, the relaunch and, yeah. you know, rebranding the Anguilla Progressive Movement uh, under the symbol, the sailboat, um, because we want to let the people of Anguilla know that we listened uh, to them, we heard what they said, and they wanted to get on board and, and that's where we are right now. And, and there, there are a lot of pressing issues in Anguilla, and we may talk and make a lot of noise, but I think the important thing is we listen to what the people are concerned about, and, and, and they let us know um, what the interests are and where they see the country is now and where they would like it to go. Uh, you know, one of the things that you just brought up earlier with uh, Kennedy and Harold is about the GST oh, yeah. and that is something that's real bothersome uh, to the people of Anguilla because they see the cost of living just keeps going up yeah. and there are no services that are being provided uh, by this administration yeah. to make the people feel that the uh, increased taxes is improving their lives and I, and I think this is something that we need to be concerned about and uh, the goods part of it um, as you heard Kennedy saying earlier, it seems like um, that in itself is, is a travesty. It's supposed to be revenue neutral, but I've had several business persons who have yeah. contacted me uh -huh. personally and said when they brought in goods in the last week that the, uh -huh. the, what they're paying has gone up. Uh -huh. So how could it be revenue neutral if they're paying more than they would have paid uh -huh. before October 1st? Uh -huh. uh, secondly, the services part of it is what we have been concerned about, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, which comes into effect in 2021 and 2023. Those are issues that we have to make sure we address. And, uh -huh. and I've said that under uh, APM administration, the goods and services tax as have been suggested uh -huh. and will not be implemented in that fashion. Uh -huh. And certainly we hope that we grow the economy and not have to raise taxes on the people of Anguilla. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. And let me again also commend you and the team really on, you know, on a pretty successful um, uh, relaunch unveiling. I thought it, you know, that it, it, you know, it, it looked the part really, and um, it fell the part too in the area at that time. Um, um, it had you know, it had that weight to it that um, the persons were looking for out there. Um, it, it sent uh, um, vibrations across the country and, and overseas as well. Um, um, you know, with with all the pump and flare and um, 
you know, and, and, you know, and those powerful messages we heard from your candidates, and including uh, the Kentish Rajal, the one of, um, I believe that her speech um, would have gone viral. Um, everyone has been calling for that all around the country, and even in those in the UK and America, um, for that matter. And um, so I want to commend you guys again for our very successful launch. Um, Deanne, um, um, you are a young woman. Um, you're in, yes. you have entered into the political arena, really, mm -hmm. truly. Um, what do you see as among the main issues uh, for you as a youth, really, and um, as we prepare to contest this upcoming election, what mm -hmm. do you see um, as the main issues uh, really heading into this election? Well, in terms of uh, electoral mm -hmm. issues, mm -hmm. I think one of the main issues facing young people is that they feel very disenfranchised. Mm -hmm. And I think we have to be very careful as uh, political movements not to let the young people feel as though this is their fault. Uh -huh. Because honestly, uh -huh. it's something that has been created through the political environment that's been existing in Angola uh -huh. for a very long time. And we have to make efforts to ensure that young people are not taken simply as, as tokens in the process, but they're actually integrated uh -huh. and they're allowed to use their voices uh -huh. and speak up on the issues themselves. Uh -huh. And this is why I felt it was very important for myself mm -hmm. to step forward mm -hmm. because even if I had a complaint um, if I sat back and I knew that my peers mm -hmm. were not in a position mm -hmm. because maybe they're starting their their new careers mm -hmm. or they're working in the, in the civil service mm -hmm. or they're just starting families so mm -hmm. they're in a position where it would be very difficult mm -hmm. for them to step forward even if they have the skills and the requisite knowledge to step forward and say this is what I want to do for Anguilla it would be very difficult for them to take that kind of risk mm -hmm. especially given the environment that we've come to know very well mm -hmm. and I have been uh, fortunate enough to be put in a situation where I, I believe that I can step forward at this particular point in time mm -hmm. and I can lend my voice to those of the young people and I can act as a representative because I think it's very important for me to say that I do not want to be a pol known as a politician. I want to be known as a representative. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. when we, we, we keep divorcing ourselves from the people and their issues, mm -hmm. I think that's where the disenfranchised, that's where you become disenfranchised mm -hmm. from um, the actual young people in the community. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I also think that um, young people I'm speaking to young people because this is within yeah, the sphere yeah. of my of my knowledge. Um, young people do feel as though there is there's not a lot going on in Angola for them, yeah. and in particular, I I've had personal experiences where I've seen the amount of young people leaving Anguilla with my own eyes, right. and where when whatever country across the world when you see a mass exodus of people from your society, especially your young people, people who are supposed to be a part of your workforce, of the productive part of your economy, that is that those are signals of very worrying times. And as a young person myself, I said, this is the country that I want to come to and I want to live in and I want to retire in. This is where I want to raise my family. This is where I want my kids to grow up. And if I want to have an environment where they can thrive, then I must also put myself in a position to participate with the governance of this society because the governance of this society is our, our part and parcel to how we experience our lives in Anguilla. So those are some of the issues that I, that those are some of the issues and especially for the, the electorate, the young electorate that I, that I see going forward, I see um, have affected them. Um, I, I might just want to touch on one topic. I'll, pr I'll probably do it preemptively. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know that there is a, a reoccurring mm -hmm. um, concern that I'm too young. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. but that's the politics of it. Th th that's how it is. <laughs> but um, that, is, that is how it is, that I'm, I'm too young and I don't have the experience. Mm -hmm. And um, what I would say is for the past four, four years, well, I'll take it back five. I went to university. I graduated with a bachelor's of law degrees, an LLB with honors. I worked with an international law firm in London. I then came back, I worked for a bit, I went off, and I did my postgraduate degree studies as for to become a barrister, which I'm now qualified as a barrister in England and Wales. Uh, and then, moving on from my legal career, because I, I I've, I've, I've been 
working on my legal skills in both mediation, judicial review, civil law, criminal law, the whole gambit. But in addition to my legal career, I've also taken on an, a business. I am developing myself as a brand, as a business, which I've been doing for the past year. And that takes a lot of work. I, I, I know because it's not a physical product, it might seem a, little, a lot different to, okay, you have a business where you have products and products being produced, but as a brand, I have had to develop contacts, I've had to negotiate with international businesses, and this is by myself without having, without having on my back um, international law firms or agents or accountants to supplement what I'm doing, to do the paperwork, to do the groundwork in order to establish those relationships. So it's, it's like if Michael Jordan and LeBron James were trying to get contracts with Nike, they had agents no. who are going to sort out that agency agreement, yeah. Yeah. who are going to um, make sure that they have the best outcome. It was just me and those big international businesses and their exports on the other side. But I made sure that I negotiated in a way mm -hmm. that I got the result that I wanted. So you're experienced enough indeed, um, because I mean, that takes some doing. I, we know that we, uh, those people have qualified, um, highly paid agents out there, mm -hmm. but you as a young woman would mm -hmm. have done that on your own, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so that, that speaks um, to a high degree, um, to my mind, of experience now. and. Um, Ability to negotiate because a country is like that as well. You have to exactly. negotiate. You have to be exactly. a, a player, a team player. You must know how to maneuver, really. Mm -hmm. And um, you are saying that uh, over the last couple of years, you have done that very well mm -hmm. for yourself, right? Yes. So that puts you in good stead. To mm -hmm. be but Hamlet, just right? think about the networking, yeah, the networking international experience, context. the global, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, footprint that yeah. she has made. I mean, that could only help yeah. Anguilla yeah. in the long run, and certainly yeah. doing that. Uh, we have the advantage of her doing that, representing Anguilla itself yeah. and yeah. its people yeah. in the political arena can only spell well for Anguilla yeah. in its future. That, 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 that's for sure. That's for sure. I mean, uh, you know, she, the title she did, um, the Miss Britain, Britain, uh, the title to the uh, Miss Universe, Universe, Great um, Britain, um, yes. That too, um, a, great, a great accomplishment. So for 27 years, she would have blazed the trail. Yeah, yeah, you better believe it. And, and she continues to Are you 27 yet? It's correction, 26. So <laughs> not 27 yet. That's yes. what I thought. <laughs> 26, 26. Okay, 26. So well, the, the, the immediate thing is 27 here. So 26 mm -hmm. will be out of yes. So in that short, you know, on the time she... That came from Uncle Sydney when he flipped the two, mm -hmm. 73 oh, okay. versus 27. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. So she would have done that. So so that, to my mind, um, should put to bed, you know, some of the comments that we're hearing about she's been too young and um, with her turn and all this stuff because she's ready. Oh, definitely. Just definitely. Us, you know, um, to my mind, she's ready. She and the youth are the saying they, they're ready, ready to have her represent them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but again, I want to tell you, though, Deanne, in terms mm -hmm. of, um, you know, the feedback we're getting here. And um, this is, you know, from all around the country, um, you know, far and wide. Mm -hmm. And even in the diaspora, you know, um, people, love, people love your, your style. Um, they love your presentation. They, do, mm -hmm. they love the way how you, um, you know, address the issues. Um, the speech you give, your initial speech, your, you know, that first speech you give that Alan Harbour. I think that you 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 brought you into the hearts of Anguillans in a very big way with that speech right there. So mm -hmm. you're in a good place. You're in a good place. It seems right now, um, you know, to um, to have move us move this country forward. And the youngsters of Anguilla for years have been very concerned about. Um, uh, being voiceless. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, I've heard the frustrations of the youngsters too over the years in Anguilla. Um, no one seemed to be hearing them, you know, and they want to have certain things on the agenda. And um, what among the other things that the youngsters want to happen in Anguilla? That's what they're concerned. Um, the things they're most concerned with, um, the, the other things. Um, mm -hmm. What do you hear from them? Well, one of the big things that a lot of people don't, mm -hmm. wouldn't, yes. They would say, "Oh wow, mm. that's a concern for young people." Yeah. Is is healthcare on okay. the island? And, and yeah. I think Dr. Lorenzo, we we spoke about this, and right. we flagged it up as something that needs to change because if you don't have faith in your own healthcare system, yeah, and I'm not yeah. saying that the healthcare system, uh, that the professionals working in the healthcare system in Angola are doing um, the best that they can do with what they have, but we still have to make sure that we create a healthcare system where um, we can rely on. We, we have trust and, and a trust in to the fullest extent. Um, another issue that the young people are, are, are airing is um, their community centers. Oh. Um, community centers is a big issue for a lot of young people. 
Um, there's no place, and, and the fact of the matter is young people now have children as well. Mm -hmm. Young people, they are growing their families, and they want to be able to develop their families in an in a environment where it's, it's conducive to positivity. Mm -hmm. And community centers and open play spaces and grounds where they can, they can be with their children openly is, is very important. Um, and on the other hand, I mean, jobs is also an issue. Um, young people don't, uh, the, the economy seems to be very slow. A lot of young people who I'm speaking to, they're not employed. And this goes back to what I was saying earlier about the brain drain problem. The young people see the answers and I'm not having jobs in Anguilla as an, as, uh, an avenue to get out. Yeah, and that's bad, you know. And because because once they and once they leave us, and once they go to the country, they're not coming back at the time soon. Exactly. Once they get into the UK and the US, mm -hmm. and they, you know, um, they, and they, uh, they get into that society, then they become stuck mm -hmm. in the and that's yes. the first. And um, and uh, and the, these are right youngsters who are mm -hmm. leaving us, so the mm -hmm. brain drain is real. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And, it's, and we need yeah. those here back in Angola to help us develop the society as well. Mm -hmm. Well, and one it, of the things uh, yeah, before you go on there, one of the things that is specific to this area where we are right now is mm -hmm. young people are concerned about sporting facilities. Oh, I mean, they yeah. talk about yeah. basketball courts. Mm -hmm. I mean, down here in South Valley, you, and, and, and these are young people who have, you know, uh, voted for the current administration with all the promises that were made, the 15-point manifesto, where nothing has really materialized. Uh, we want to give the young people that uh, opportunity to see um, a difference in terms of um, how um, their represent representation will come. Mm -hmm. And so these are the things that, that uh, we listen, we hear them, and we're going to make sure that uh, we move in that direction. Sorry, mm -hmm. but you can go yeah, on. No, go uh, it's fine. That's, that's another point that I was going to go to very yeah, shortly. Sure. Um, we, we see that we have the likes of Zan L. Hughes and Jamar Hamilton and Shara Proctor and Michelle Mead and Hassani. And um, we, we understand that these, these are young people who've come up in Anguilla. They've, gone, they've started these journeys with whatever they've had, whatever they've had. And they've been able to make out of whatever they've had their successes. But we can't just wait all the time to jump on once our young people get to the point of success. We have to nurture, we have to nurture them, we have to say, we support you even at this level. If a young person comes to you and tells you at the age of seven that their dream is to become a basketball player, don't tell them they need to have a more realistic dream. Right. Mm -hmm. Because entertainment, the entertainment and sporting industries, are lucrative mm -hmm. the world over and it's not just going to america because in europe the basketball teams in europe they make so much money football teams in europe make so much money athletics it's a matter of sponsorships and 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 being endorsed but once you have people who are positioned to make that a priority then that's how you see your your children be able being able to believe in the dreams that they're dreaming from a very young age. You know, you know and um, you're so right about that because as it is right now, one morning here on one of my commentary programs, I made mention of the fact that so many youngsters are out there involved in music. I have a son, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, all these guys are into like music. I said, but is it making any sense for you to go to school to study um, production? Mm -hmm. He said, they say yes. I said, and how will this work for you? But but then again, when I look back, I said, no, but they're right. Because I mean, the music is a, you know, is a multi-billion dollar industry around the world. And um, in the way the world has evolved now, um, you're no longer constrained, uh, con you know, to this little you know, rap little spot here, you are on a world scene. And mm -hmm. um, I've seen it with other youngsters too out there. Um, the guy, Louis Sherrod, the guys work around the world. They're back on the back there in Europe, there in mm -hmm. America, they're mm -hmm. in the UK, they're on the move. Mm -hmm. really, and that's how they make their money. Yes. So I'm um, so young, so understand where the, where, you know where these jobs are, you know where the opportunities lie as well. Yes, you know. I don't know if you know of uh, a, a, the the yeah. comedian um, Major Hype. Yeah. Yes. Um, he started off yeah. on Instagram, and yeah. it's all about supporting your young people's dreams. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Started off on yeah. on Instagram. Yeah. 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 He yeah. he's funny. Yeah. He just kept sharing it, and sh and he and he became big, and he started to create a career for himself across the world. He is a big boy. So. 
So you look, you look at. You look at. I mean, you look at guys. Obviously, this this is taken in the context, of course, of their dreams as well. You can't just have them. Um, you can't just have them in in terms of forcing it on them. But you look at guys like Yellow Shirt Man and and Weatherman and all of these guys, and they are they are really genuine gems and brilliant gems because they're funny and it's relatable. And there's nothing to say we can't export that talent. You can export it. It can be exported really, and uh, and they understand it. I mean. So the youngsters understand what is now appealing in the world, you know, what's trending out there, and um, you know, and you must give them a chance to explore that. Mm -hmm. It's important that we give them a chance to explore those things because right now, that's where the money is at as well. Mm -hmm. the, the traditional, conventional stuff that we know of, you know, open the shop today, open the shop, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it has changed a whole lot from that. I mean, it has changed a whole lot now to the information age, you know, where we have the internet as well, like, which has broken all the down all the bar barriers now. And you can do, you, you can dream as big as you want to dream and achieve as much as you want to achieve once you have the ambition. So mm -hmm. um, you are speaking good. You are from, coming from a good place where youngsters, are, this is what they're saying. I sit here all the time, here in the morning, we're talking there, and these are the things that they're concerned about, mm -hmm. really. And it would be good to have you in there to represent you know, their interests yeah. and, and, to, and to advance these things for them. Yes. That would be very good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, yeah, no, definitely. And, uh, you know, one of the things that we also want to address is the education system because, you know, we feel that the education system in Anguilla uh, is not adequate right now for the modern world and for the global reach that Anguilla um, has. And, and so, so uh, and, and we have met with educators. Mm -hmm. And so this is not just something I'm pulling out of the air. We've met with educators, so we understand the concerns that they have. Our literacy rate and things like that um, has in, uh, decreased. And uh, Anguilla used to have a 90 some percent liter literacy rate, and now it's down. And so these are things of concern. Also, technical skills training with uh, technical schools is something that we have to devote um, our attention to and put resources into because not everyone wants to have a traditional education. They have skills that need to be de developed, apprenticeship programs. I'm sure, um, you know, the other things like cooperatives that uh, we can look into. And then so the, the different facets of, of this uh, country that have not been tapped into yet that needs to be and the resources are there we, and the potential is there and we just need to get to it. And, and that's why I think having, looking at this from a youth perspective, mm -hmm. it gives us that opportunity to see the innovative and creative ways that the youth are thinking mm -hmm. and, and they are leading. And we can't just, as you said, have no, the, the, no. the, the, the yeah, open the a store, close it, the no, conventional no, stuff, no, that is gone. And Anguilla yeah. has, you know, heritage sites that we can develop. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the things that we can do where we have attractions mm -hmm. and that would bring more tourists here. So again, that tourism product, mm -hmm. which is our bread and butter, mm -hmm. just has to be expanded and developed in a way that we um, increase the heads and beds and also have more visitors to the island. Yeah. But even that though, I mean, when it comes to visitors to our shores, over the years I've observed the change as well. Evolved, yes. You know, um, from the older folks who came to Anguilla on the beach with their books in their hand and their sun lotion and their and the chairs mm -hmm. uh, reading, mm -hmm. that has changed now. Yes. The younger visitors, the tourists now, he wants more. Yes. A whole yes. lot more. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if you, mm -hmm. and I'm sure the tourist and yeah. um, the Anguilla Tourist Board is doing a, a really good job mm -hmm. in promoting Anguilla. Mm -hmm. um, from my experience when I've gone abroad and I've been able to travel to a lot of, a lot of different countries and experience their tourism product, um, one thing that I have seen about the, the experience is, is more than the beach. Right. It's a, but it's, it's, it, across the board, it has to be more than the beach yes. because it has to be a, a genuine connection between mm -hmm. you and, and those who are coming to experience your culture. Oh, yes. Um, and we have to develop. We have to develop it, and it doesn't just have to be the standard, the standard mm -hmm. tourism product. It can also be sports tourism, and sports mm -hmm. tourism is a massive thing all over. When we, when I was in university, mm -hmm. um, all the athletes who were training at the University of Birmingham for the Commonwealth Games and the Olympic Games, they traveled to Jamaica to stay there for months to live and to train. Mm -hmm. And they, what they do is they export their talent and their athletes to places that have a specific climate, 
or a specific if they have the facilities and they're able to train there and 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 maintain um the same level of standard that they would need for international competition that's what they do mm -hmm. they export their athletes the world over and they do that not just in track and field they do that in basketball they do that in football um you see these athletes traveling all over and sports tourism is very is is a growing market and is becoming very lucrative and that is true, that is true, and um, we have athletes on the world scene, we know of that. Um, in fact, you're one of those persons too, who are very athletic, uh, I know over the years as well. And um, there's a big market for that as well. Yeah. You know? And yeah. Um, yes, and um, we have seen what I can do for countries. For example, you said both over the years, um, mm -hmm. when he was in the run. Um, that thing did so much for Jamaica. Yeah, you know, it's um, but that's tourism wise. It's and so icon. most persons who would have seen him in the run say, where is he from? Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And they Google Jamaica. And then they want to go to Jamaica. So that, it has the potential of increasing your tourism as well. It mm -hmm. brings you right up all the way for sure. Um, it's one of those, one of those uh, you know, tools that you mm -hmm. can use and you know, mm -hmm. that develop and, you know, and uh, promote Anguilla out there. You read about that. Definitely. Uh, yes. Tourism is another yeah. big one we have going for us here. So our little small you know, location geographically, it, does, it does in no way limits us in these times. You know? And I'll tell you right now uh, that I've come to realize that you know, it has been this way for a long time, <clears throat> that our young people, in Anguilla, really, uh, really, when it comes to being resourceful, there are resources um, is among, among our best resources. Yeah? We have we have a vast, you know, um, you know, amount of resources there for young people, and we have to harness that stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, certainly, I'm happy that you are out there at this point in time, my sister, um, to be able to represent the youth of the land, really. And uh, by you being out here, I'm sure it, it it will help to build the confidence of other youngsters as well, mm -hmm. you know, to make their contribution to their homeland Anguilla. Because for years, for some strange reason, youngsters felt as if they were shut out. They can't get in the door. Yes. They can't get in here. You know, all it is, yeah. you know, but yeah. um, with you being here now, it, it, I'm sure it will serve as, serve as a living testimony that, um, yes, youngsters can get in there and make a difference. Mm -hmm. I hope that will happen. Eh? Yeah. I mean, I'll say from yeah. personal experience that yeah. I, I yeah. also experience this, the same type of yeah. uh, voter apathy feeling yeah. like it doesn't make a difference. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. But um, the doc, and this is what I really appreciate about mm -hmm. the doc and his leadership style, yeah. is that throughout the whole process of me deciding mm -hmm. to put myself forward as a candidate, mm -hmm. he kept on speaking to me, mm -hmm. checking in on me, saying, hey, we want, this is what we want. This is what we think you can do. This is what, you. so it was a, it was a matter of, of, of instilling um, support and encouragement in mm -hmm. me all, uh, throughout the process. And mm -hmm. when people ask me, oh, why you decided to join the APM, I'm saying, mm -hmm. look, I can believe in what he has because I've experienced mm -hmm. the type of leadership that he governs under. Okay. I've experienced it myself mm -hmm. and I can speak for it. Mm -hmm. So that's all a part of it for me. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what it is for young people. You, you can't just tell young people you're going to be there. You have to show and tell. Mm -hmm. you, ha you, you must prove it. The, there must be proof of that. And mm -hmm. certainly that's what's happening right now. So this is the reason why you're a member of the APM today because you can relate to um, these things that I've just spoke to you about as well. Okay. Well, so, you know, Emma, as I said, the APM, the Anguilla Progressive Movement, is one of inclusion, you yeah, know. Yeah. And, and we have to, you know, put our uh, money where our mouth is. Yeah. And uh, basically, we had said uh, that we would ensure, if elected, that um, young people, 35 and under, would make up 50% of the boards. Yeah. Uh, but I think that going that next step and in including youth in the, um, as candidates, I think shows that we really are committed to this. And, uh, you know, what impresses me about Deanne is you listen to how accomplished she is at her young age. But she's so humble. And Very that humble. is what comes across in everything she says and does and the way she carries herself, humility. We can't, if you're representing people, you have to be a servant leader. You can't go in there and, you know, have you yeah, such self-importance yeah. that you're above the people and the people have to come to you. Also, we still have to go to the people. And that's yeah. why I said public mm -hmm. consultation is something that we will do continuously. Mm -hmm. Make sure that the people, if we have mm -hmm. um, decisions to make, policies to implement, that we'll go to the people mm -hmm. and let them have a say. And if, they, if the majority says this is not what they want, mm -hmm. it's not going to happen because we are of the people, by the people, for the people. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's the goal of, of the Anguilla Progressive Movement, and that's going forward. And I just want to say, you know, you saw the rest of our candidates oh, yeah. um, for the districts, yeah, so and in due course, we will also launch the, um, the yeah, at-large yeah. candidates. Uh -huh. And I think that Anguillians will be impressed 
that um, you know the APM is here to serve the people and we'll do it with competence, mm -hmm. but we'll, we'll do it with humility and we'll do it with that uh, you know, sense of, of appreciation that the mm -hmm. people have given us that chance to represent their needs. All right. And um, um, I'll ask you a question as well, but um, the end, um, since, the, since the launch of mm -hmm. um, the APM uh, last week, Saturday, mm -hmm. uh, how, how has this impacted your life, though? I know that you've been around many big things, Miss Universe and yeah. Rich and all that stuff. You've been, you have been before lights, camera, action. You've seen mm -hmm. the lights, you've seen the crowd, all that stuff <laughs> mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. over the years. Um, but how has this impacted you, though, the experience after this unveiling, it became official? How has mm -hmm. this impacted you? This is, this mm -hmm. is, um, the unveiling has been, and uh, coming forth as a representative for mm -hmm. my district is it's something very personal to me mm -hmm. because Whereas on, for myself and Miss Universe and Miss Anguilla and doing my law degree and, and practicing, those are all personal ambitions. Um, this is outside of my personal ambition. This is, this is about giving back to the people who have allowed me to experience and achieve what I've accomplished thus far. Because I have to make it abundantly clear that I would not have been able to achieve what I've achieved if it, hasn't, if it wasn't for the contributions of Anguillians who've given up their time to ensure I was trained as a young athlete, who've given up their time to make sure that I was, I was prepared as a debater, that I was, um, I was able to execute on the Miss Anguilla stage. So I've had a lot of people through, with me throughout the years, a good team of people who believed in me um, and gave up their time and resources to ensure that I was able to succeed. And for me, this is this is just an act of giving back and saying thank you because Anguilla has been so good to me um, for everything. Um, so I mean, it, it is a very different experience. So those experiences, um, it's it's a lot more about connecting with people um, rather than just selling myself as a, as a as a person. Or are you surprised by the you know, the type of reaction you're getting from people? The feedback it must be it must be overwhelming. It was overwhelming. Yeah. It was overwhelming. Yeah. Um, it was yeah. overwhelming in the in the beginning, yeah. um, and I, I, I because the words were just so true for me. Mm -hmm. I appreciated that it resound it, it it resonated with people so well mm -hmm. because it was that speech was very personal for me because I felt I felt. The, 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 the feeling silenced, feeling like you can't say something or else you'll be, it'll be taken as being unpatriotic or ungrateful. And, and those things really, I really grappled with them for a long time. Mm -hmm. Should I say something? Should I do something like this? Or people yeah. are going to say I shouldn't mm -hmm. have done this. Or people, and, I, and I had to say at a, a certain point, no, this is not just about what people are going to say. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, there is a bigger picture. And the bigger picture is Anguilla. Uh -huh. And that is what it is. The bigger picture is your country, um, Anguilla, indeed. Yeah. Now, the task at hand is a daunting one, uh -huh. I'm sure. Um, at your party level meetings, you would, you would have been brought up to speed as to what's happening. You yourself on the ground as a young Anguilla mm -hmm. woman who lives here, who mm -hmm. understand the, the complex issues that are affecting us. Um, we are facing a, a very um, serious challenge. Um, the economy, uh, mm -hmm. the number one issue, um, people are suffering. You two mentioned mm -hmm. um, the migration issue, people mm -hmm. are leaving out of there and um, really, um, uh, have you given serious thought? And you must have because you're, con you're contesting really, but um, um, what goes to your mind when, when, when you try to fathom the gravity, you know, um, mm -hmm. the weight of the task that, 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 that's yeah. ahead of you? Mm -hmm. um, it is mm -hmm. a very daunting task mm -hmm. for anybody. Mm -hmm. For those who are young and for those who are experienced in, in this game. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what's very important is to put in mind or to remain grounded in the fact that it can be achieved. Because I think once we give up hope, once we feel as though the task is too daunting, mm -hmm. that is when we've really lost. So we, we must keep hope alive. We have to keep Definitely. hope alive. We have we have to put innovation mm -hmm. as as one of the first things we put forward. Because innovation, mm -hmm. you know how they say um, necessity is the mother of invention. Yes, yes, yes. That's yes. right. That's how it. That's what it comes to. Come that. And that's why it's so important to have a a, a, a variety of young people mm -hmm. who are there to push what young people think is the best way forward. 
because they are, are, are the seat of innovation in, in the Anguillan economy and in the Anguillan society. You know, it would be exciting, um, really and truly, um, to have some of those younger agendas promoted again. Mm -hmm. We understand what it costs for the internet is mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. I've seen youngsters creating things. The youngsters who, who sit online and um, make money from it. And, well, exactly. I, I Coding. Yeah. Coding. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. I could never believe it. The guys can sit at the computer and make money right here. Yeah. Yes. And um, we have smart kids who are doing the app writing. All app stuff. development, they, yeah. They all this stuff, development of apps and the mm -hmm. uh, website, all this stuff. They're doing big things from right here. Technology is our ticket. Okay, that's what it is right now. You're right about that. That's our way out of it right now. Um, again, the conventional stuff would have served us in a way uh, over the years and served us well. But the modern times are here. And um, and rightly, Dr. Webster, I must say that I must commend you for embracing you because these guys understand the future. They Definitely, the but they the are the future. They are the future. <laughs> they, they know the way to We are the now. We're the now. They, they're here right mm -hmm. now for sure. And um, mm -hmm. you know, and when you embrace them, you know, um, you know, with the vibrancy, you know, the, the mm -hmm. youth that is in them, and, yeah. the, and the understanding of, of this new world, really and truly, how it's working. Yes. I mean, it can only go up from here. Up yeah. from here. Definitely. Here. That's Definitely. For sure. That's for sure. Yeah. All right. Okay. There's um. There's Wait. there's one other issue that I I, yeah. I want to address, mm -hmm. um, and it's because I've been getting so many questions about it mm -hmm. and. It's the, the whole issue about the airport expansion. Oh, that's um, I've come to that for you in a while. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm young, um, oh, yeah, yeah. And, and people want to know, and um, I want to be able to speak to them about it very honestly. Yes. Um, so what I, what I really want to tell people is that really and truly, I was 10 years old when this dispute began. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I really don't have first-hand <laughs> knowledge of those years, mm -hmm. but I went off to university, I studied law, uh, I'm a barrister and I understand mm -hmm. the legal principles. Mm -hmm. So um, I came back and I, I, I was asking questions. I read the files because I wanted to know. Mm -hmm. And you have in your constitution, it is constitutionally provided that the government has a right to compulsory, compulsorily acquire land, mm -hmm. right? For the public good and the public interest. Mm -hmm. They have a right to do so. Mm -hmm. And Dame Bern the late Dame Bernis Lake QC at the time, my great aunt, uh, my late great aunt, um, the government acquired the lands, her lands, as part of the airport expansion. Fine. As far as I know, she didn't have any dispute about the government acquiring the lands because she understood that the airport needed to be expanded. But the Constitution also provides that you have to compensate promptly right Same time. for that acquisition Same time. right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so valuations were then made mm -hmm. um, on both sides there was a dispute about valuations mm -hmm. and then it was taken to the board of assessment mm -hmm. and the board of assessment r ruled because they, they made their valuations the valuations were on the basis of the land acquisition act which required the land to be valued as agricultural land but Dame Barnes Lake QC, she disputed that on the basis of, of um, court cases, court cases that were saying that that's incorrect. So she disputed that, but the Board of Assessment ruled in favor of the government. Now, at that point, um, she took her dispute to the court, and, and this, is what, this is something that Every Anguillian, I think every Anguillian knows intimately the, the, the relationship of going to court because of a land dispute. Okay. That, is a, that is almost a part of yeah. Anguillian, uh, uh, a, a, a part of us. Yeah. Um, as every Anguillian has a right to, Correct. To, to, to their land or to, to compensation for their land. She took it to the Court of Appeal. Um, to speak about the compensation level. Now, um, at the time the land was transferred and everything, because the, the land then went over from, from my late great aunt, Dame Bonis Lake QC, it was transferred over to a company, and the directors of that company then went to the government and said, hey, let's see if we can settle. Mm -hmm. um, but no settlement was reached, and so they went to the Court of Appeal. And the Court of Appeal then drastically increased the amount of compensation on the basis, the, on two bases. Number, the first basis, which is very interesting for Anguillians in general. No land 
in Anguilla period can be valued as agricultural land. No piece of land in Anguilla must be valued as agricultural land. It must be valued as developmental land. It has developmental value, for sure. All lands. All lands in Anguilla must be. No, no land can be valued as the, um, agricultural land. Um, and then it, it drastically increased the, the amount of compensation. Now, my understanding is that the directors of the company re-approached the government again, and you have to have full, full disclosure, the, 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 um, they approached the AUM government, and there was no settlement, and they also approached the AUF government, and there was no settlement. So full, that's full disclosure. Um, and so the government then, upon receiving their um, judgment, then decided not to come back to see if they can settle, but to go straight and appeal to the Privy Council. Oh, they had lost their, they had lost their appeal. Yes, the yeah. government lost yeah. their appeal. Yeah. So they decided to appeal straight to the Privy Council. Yeah. Now, what I do know of the law and what I do know about the system of the Privy Council is that it takes years for a case to move through the Privy Council, mm -hmm. two to three years. Um, and the government have an active award against them, mm -hmm. and they have the the way that they can t to resolve it is to wait until the Privy Council appeal is finalized in however much time, or to come and sit with the the company and mm -hmm. have a settlement so that it's happened before then. Um, so the notion, really and truly, that the Kentishes or the lakes are holding up the the development of the airport project okay. is untrue, and it's and really and truly, it's unfair. Mm -hmm. It's unfair mm -hmm. because this is Anguillians know this very intimately. Mm -hmm. That when it comes to land disputes, they they are no stranger to the court system. Oh, so land, they are no stranger to the court system. Around here. Yes. Yeah. Um, so what I do know now, what I have heard of now, is that the Minister of Infrastru Infrastructure mm -hmm. um, is, yeah. is saying that um, the airport expansion in, in phase three uh, on the 2nd of October, he said that it's here, and um, that in February 2020, the compensation of the, of the, for the land for the airport acquisition will be complete. Oh, no. So I, I, I'm only telling you what my current knowledge is, and on that basis, I guess there are discussions that are going on that I don't know of, or if there are none, then I don't know how exactly it, it'll reach February 2020 for it to be resolved, especially since it's still an active case going mm -hmm. to the Privy Council. So I don't know um, exactly what the, the status is, but on 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 the basis of the Privy Council appeal, it'll be. But you know they'll try to tie to you because of your family. That's like I know, you know, I know, so, I know, and, and I know. Too, it's, it's not your. I mean, your battle is because you're a member of family, but uh, yeah. it was before your time. It was before my time. Before, it was before, before time. my time. And as you said a while ago, every family in Angola have a right to protect and defend their lands. I have gone to the court to defend what mine. Everybody does that stuff, okay? So um, it's no shame at all, and you, you must defend your rights. You have certain basic human rights that must be protected too. We all freedom from here. deprivation of property. For sure, for sure. So, so they can't tie that to you. Um, you are you are clean. You are I, above what it I can only it say you. what I can yeah. only say what I know of yeah. in yeah. the process. Yeah. I wasn't really involved in it yeah. firsthand no. myself. I wasn't yeah. the lawyer or the litigator on the case. Yeah, okay. um, so I'm just um, I'm just explaining what I know of from my. Yeah. <laughs> from after going to school and trying to understand the case myself, this is what I can see. All right, that's, that's good. And, and but but you're, you're not the one to go after, but they will try because they want to win. And, uh, I, I understand. And, and I understand. You have an accomplished record, accomplished young lady, um, well spoken. But you know, I'm, um, you know, I'm, I have great support behind you. So they're gonna find something, but um, the yeah. last issue can't work on you. It can't work on you because that's not your battle. You, you met that battle in, in, in training was it most before <laughs> you came around uh, yeah, on on the on the scene. I heard John Kentish sometime before. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, when the uh, when the government lost the appeal, he warned them from this year right here. He warned them to come to the table. Yeah. He took his time. I was half one half hour. I'm sure mm -hmm. see it from in my um archives. He warned them not to um proceed to the privy council. He told them come to the table. Ties up the case. Let us have a negotiation settlement yeah. on this whole thing here. And no one listened to him. He begged them more than, more than one occasion to do that. So don't blame them and don't blame the young lady here for that. Uh, you were one before. If you were one before. And um, all of you out there who might be saying these things, really and truly, um, I know for sure you would have stand by and allow persons to come to your land 
and do the one trip and with all the companies you for it fully you will defend yourselves and your property tooth and nail i know that all right so um you must be fair you must be fair as well as you move along okay mm -hmm. well i'm glad you trust that because that was a talk too was around here and you know for a while it's yeah. like, okay yes nonsense talk that's just small talk mm -hmm. because Deanne was a child when that came it's was 10. Yeah, mm -hmm. 10 it's 10. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds good yeah. all right okay so folks we had um five minutes after the 12 o'clock hour dr Lester, this young lady here um she's ready she's ready I can tell that, yeah, you ready. know. Yeah. She's really ready. Yep. Yeah. I wouldn't want to have to sit down no. and try to negotiate no. with no, no, her, no, no, you know. No. So I think tough. that, She's you tough. know, our administering yeah. powers, yeah. you know, they have to understand yeah. that when we represent Anguilla, yeah. we're goes. representing Anguilla, yeah. you know. So. You know, I'm sitting here with a goosebumps because I, I, I know I've known her for a long time, but she's stiff. I mean, you, mean, you can tell that she can have stiff negotiate as well. That's <laughs> right, can, what I was trying to say. That. Yes. Yeah, I, grew up in, I grew up in Tanglewood with around 11 people, so mm -hmm. I had to grow up a little tough as the only girl. <laughs> you know? I, guess, I guess they would tell her to look sideways and steal a piece of chicken. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's tough enough. She's tough enough for them to win. Um, and this should put Angola in, in, in a better position. Um, so it is time. Uh, I mean, it's a change, can't we? It's, it's time for the ladies to come true, I believe so. Yes, and, um, yeah, right. It is time for her and other officers to come true to make their contribution to Angola. Because you must face it, you know, what we've had over the last 40 years in Angola, you know, everybody, everybody came through and they made their mark and Angola contribution, you know. But um, we have stagnated somewhat. We have yes. Stagnant, okay. And the time for us to make that other big push right now. And I believe that. Um, that the youngsters of Angola, talking with the experience, you know, um, will be able to take us to that level. Now, we have seen ourselves, Dr. Webster and um, Deanne, we were ahead of other Caribbean countries, some of them in a close proximity to us here. Definitely. And uh, we have seen what the youngsters have done for them. Yeah, I would say, yes, those guys, Sean and those guys, and um, Timothy, those guys. Right. They have transformed that economy from Definitely. a sugar based economy into, you know, a world class tourism, you know, an attraction. Right, they have up the ante, right up you know, in right short up, time, in too. Short time, mm -hmm. okay, and, and that's you, mm -hmm. yeah. Barbados. Yeah. You look Barbados. at Barbados I mean, and the innovation and technology sector, okay. You look at okay. um, okay. BBI. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so we must be able to, to, to embrace the youth really at, at this time, and um, you cannot, you cannot shut them out. No, yeah, you should shut them out, you're shutting out yourself because you need them to move us to that other area, really. We really need, they need to be in, in, in this um in this um society. Okay, Deanne, if you were to yes. speak to the people of Valley South in particular, mm -hmm, those mm -hmm, out mm -hmm. there, um, you know, who you're now um you're seeking their support, yes. really truly yeah. in the upcoming election, um, mm -hmm. you know, um, what would the appeal be? And um, mm -hmm. you know, you know, I, 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 I've spoken to people in Valley, some people in Valley South, uh -huh. um, and I understand their concerns. And what I really want to tell them is um, that the, the political environment, I want them to, to try as much as possible to see this as me coming to them as a representative, me coming to be the representative that they want. I mean, as we look around District 4, um, we can't we can't look around and point to something and say, okay, that is ours. It's always something that you're you're you're, you're sharing, you're borrowing. It's it's we need to to foster a sense of, of sense of community and and something that's organic and grows grows from within. Because that's how we have to that's how we grow and that's how we make this society one that's viable and sustainable. But I really want the people of, of South Valley to understand that I'm coming to them very honestly as someone who's gone to Valley Primary School, someone who's been through um, the ALHDS system, someone who was a, a, a golden horse for all my life. Valley School? Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah of course. What? Yeah. Um, that, that this is not just me coming in just to, I just want to get into power. Mm. Mm. I want to represent them. No, and, and you you mean that you mean that they really from the heart I can tell that's the show and um, you have a contribution to make it seems like to me right now as well what you've done for yourself in your life I believe that you you can you can replicate that on a national level and you know, on a larger scale really for them out there um, you know um, you know with your um, with what you know uh, that's mm -hmm. the show that's the show Dr. Webster you must be a proud man oh I, I am I yeah. am you know not just um, because of the launch and after that, uh, you know, but just in association with uh, Deanne and some of the other young people that mm -hmm. that we've met and spoken to and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, potential candidates. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's refreshing. I mean, you know, when you went around Anguilla before um, October 5th, the mm -hmm. evening of, 
There was a sense of despair, you know, there was a sense of a lack of hope, mm -hmm. um, a sense of that um, we didn't have anybody looking out for us um, in, mm -hmm. in, in, in the seat of government. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you, you you were there, you saw the excitement, oh, you yeah. saw it was what? like carnival in um, October, wasn't yeah. it? Um, yeah, at, uh, yes, uh, on Harbor Beach, oh, I mean, um, the people the people are engaged and they, they worked up mm -hmm. and you asked, um, you know, Deanne, how it was after the launch. I mean, I mean, I'm still buzzing with excitement. I'm, I'm still on a high, you know, because I, I think that to see the people get so involved in, in the politics again, people who said they were not going to vote are saying now they wish election was this week so they can get out there and vote. And that's, that's the type of enthusiasm that, that I have, um, gone at being around um, young people like Deanne and, and so from there on, I'd say it's time for the, the gray beards and the bald heads to leave. Yeah. And so that, uh, so that yeah. we can get there and help to move this country forward. You know, even when I saw here, I'm in the, um, I mean, I'm most related to politics. I, I came from a family of um, you know, strong people in that area. And um, I'll tell you that even here in our area here, the talk has changed a whole lot. Yes. Since, um, you know, the, the unveiling of, of Mr. Kentish Rogers around here, persons who uh, were adamant that they were not going to the polls this time around, and um, you know, and were doubtful as to whether or not um, the incumbent could have been could, could be beaten. Um, really, there's a new sense of hope now and optimism in the area. <laughs> that I'm That's from, awesome. From, yeah, from That's persons great. in this area, um, right across the board, and um, you know, e even persons who would have supported the incumbent are also saying that those persons who are coming in contact with. That's what they're saying as well. So she had brought that, you know, this breath of fresh air to the atmosphere. I, I to my mind, um, you know, it has really um, it set the political, you know, uh, you know, atmosphere, you know, ablaze. Really, yes, so to yes. speak, out there. Um, people are excited about her and uh, what you know the prospect of her being elected. And so uh, we expect that. Um, I can even see that since this, um, her unveiling, um, the, the, the chat has changed too because uh, before that. There was an air of confidence being expressed, you know, by you know, by the ruling people. But now you're hearing a different talk as well. So I believe that as we as we uh, press along, yes, really, um, you know, and count down to this um, upcoming elections here, uh, that is, it's just going to get even stiffer for her. But um, she seems ready for the battle. Definitely, really, um, and definitely. She's, and she's proven to me that she's no soft girl neither. She's not a soft girl either. She's ready for the for the role really. And I'm um, looking forward to seeing her on the road, really out there, you know, during, during the campaign season. But um, really, truly, it's, it's a good move. And um, you know, one thing that I would have heard from you, the even your distractors, Dr. Webster, is that the other thing that it's a good move, you know, um, you know, when we, you're able to, you know, draft in this young lady right here. Well, I think we have to thank um, Brother yeah. Evan Gums yeah, for, yeah, for yeah, actually yeah, for sure. having yeah. that foresight mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. that uh, wisdom you know to to do what he did um, at the height of his mm -hmm. political career to mm -hmm. step down and allow her um, to be in his place you yes, know yes, 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 yes. reminds me of when my brother sam yes. did similar yes, back yes. in 2014 yes. so yes. so th those are the things that i think that really um mm -hmm. has made this where mm -hmm. patriotism mm -hmm. is is now running rampant and mm -hmm. not throughout this movement and I think the people are starting to see that this is not selfishness. This is one. And as you said, she is no easy person because I oh. still see the picture of her with the javelin yeah. when she was, uh, you know, that yeah. athlete. Uh, you know, so so those are the things that I think will be helpful. And the, the rest of the team, mm -hmm. I think, you know, one of the focus is youth, but also women. You know, yeah, we yeah, have yeah, yeah. her, we have Kimberly Fleming and Seven. Mm -hmm. And and I think that that's one of the focuses now that mm -hmm. um, Anguilla is moving towards that, um, that caring, nurturing. Mm -hmm. We have to make sure that we look out for the people and move Anguilla forward in a sustainable manner. Oh, yes. Not just um, yeah. hype. But in a sustainable fashion. Yeah, that, yes. That's for sure. And again, um, she's the easy person. You can tell even today during the presentation here that um, she's prepared to defend and to fight for the people of Angola. Definitely. She's prepared to stand up for what is right, really. And you need that. We need more of that in our society. People who can stand up for something. Because very often times you find when the guys and the girls get in there, you know, you know, they just fall along. They, they just fall in line and follow, you know, follow mm -hmm. a line, really, and truly. Um, speaking to her when I go here, you get a sense that that's not her. That's not right, her, really. right. Um, she's objective, really. She'll be probing, really. And you need that in, in you know, in governance and things. Well, it's very important to have people who can, um, you know, provide the checks and balances for you. Okay. And I think we have a good person here, of country Angola, and this lady right here. And um, other youngsters out there need to follow suit as well, because the future of the land belongs to these people. All right. And um, we are in a big hole right now, a dark hole, Angola. You are in a big hole right now, and if we are to, yes. and if we are to 
claw ourselves out of that big hole, we, we're going to need our youth. Definitely. Right? That's Definitely. Sure. That's mm -hmm. for sure. All right, guys, in closing, uh, comments, closing, closing, uh, closing comments. Uh, no, my, cl my closing comment is just yeah. um, to the people of District 4 yeah. um, that I am yeah. not, um, I'm here to be approached. I'm here yeah. for you to ask me questions, for you to put me through all the tough questions and all the tasks. Hold on. I'm Some not folks afraid. Told me that before that, that uh -huh. this girl is uh, uh, stuck up. I said, no way. She cannot be stuck up. That she, she's anti I said, no way. Not this lady here. Hey. She's not that way. <laughs> you are, as you know, yeah. I, said, I said, no, I don't feel you know her. She's mm -hmm. not. She's far from that. She's down uh -huh. on the ground. Yeah. yeah. Down here. Yeah, I said it earlier. Ground, humble. Right, yeah. Down, right, yeah. Down, yeah. Humble, yeah. humble. No, I don't see that. I said, no, I've had to a, be. Not at all. Uh, I, I I don't know if they know my background. Tag, yeah. what is that? Uh, uh, a place for stuck up people? If no, you, no, yeah. If you have a, an attitude, you get in trouble. Yeah, so no, um, no, no, no but I'm 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 here for all the questions. Mm -hmm. I'm here for all. If you want to air your doubts, mm -hmm. if you want to air your support, I'm mm -hmm. I'm here to listen to them and mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. to respond to the questions you have for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I I hope that when I come around and I have the chance to meet everyone mm -hmm. that they could at least lend me their ear. I know that, I know that people have party affiliations. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes when they see someone coming, they, they all, almost automatically shut off, you know, say don't they don't want them, you know, but I want, I just want to, I just want your ear. You don't, you don't have to, I, I, I'm not asking for your heart yet. I just want your ear. Yes. Yeah. 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 She's she from Valley South, yeah. right? Yeah. That's where you're from yeah. and your mom, right? Yeah. 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 That's right. That's right. Yeah, I just want to say, um, you know, I don't know if you're finished, um, you know, District 1, you know, that's um, who I'd like to represent. Uh, that's where I grew up and um, I learned everything that is me. I got um, from, you know, District 1, from Island Harbor and the surrounding villages. And, and I just want the people to understand mm -hmm. that, you know, mm -hmm. I would like that opportunity mm -hmm. to represent them in the House of Assembly, because I think that there are needs mm -hmm. that this country have that have been pushed aside mm -hmm. and because um, our uh, elected mm -hmm. representatives have not mm -hmm. um, put themselves in the position to be representatives and to mm -hmm. care about the people like they mm -hmm. should. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it is one thing that appeals to me mm -hmm. that Anguilla has so much potential and if we uh, were to engage the people of Anguilla mm -hmm. we would learn a lot and that's what we have done as oh, we've yeah. gone around mm -hmm. we've heard from the people we know what their needs and concerns are mm -hmm. and that's what we want to do mm -hmm. and so in this upcoming election uh, Anguillians should mm -hmm. uh, you know vote based on what their interests are mm -hmm. not vote just because someone is your family member or somebody gave you um, a gift, mm -hmm. or they gave you money, mm -hmm. but vote based on who you think can represent you best mm -hmm. and represent your children and your children's children. Mm -hmm. Because I think in the long run, if we continue to vote the way we did in the past, mm -hmm. we're gonna lose this country, we become second and third class citizens, or we have to leave. And I think that, um, mm -hmm. I don't want to see that happen for this country that I love so much. No, not at all. And before you go to um, uh, the end, someone asked a question here. I don't, I'm not sure the context. Uh, they asked a question here mm -hmm. for you. Uh, Hamma, please ask her about what about morality? How does she? How would she relate to that? I don't know what. The, mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't know sure the context, but um, that's what's, what was posed to me. What's the context? I, I'm not sure the context. Uh, morality. I don't know. That's, uh, <laughs> I guess. But that's what was posed to me. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, you. Well, I think it's important for if you if you're standing mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. office, mm -hmm. for it to be a position that you. Mm -hmm. You, en you ensure that your morality is a part of your, the package going forth into appealing for the people. Mm -hmm. It must be clean. It must, yes. Mm -hmm. You must stand, you must be You must stand for yeah. what you, mm -hmm. what you truly believe in, not in what someone tells you. Mm -hmm. um, and, and if, even if it's somebody within the party who tells you this is the way it goes, mm -hmm. you have to be able to say, look, mm -hmm. I disagree with you on this basis. Mm -hmm. And, and I think this is a better way. And you, you, you engage in dialogue in order to properly represent the people. Okay. And before you go, I go again, um, that piece that you gave us earlier about um, negotiating, people seem to love that one too. Um, mm -hmm. Again, what you did again, you said that you're a brand right now. Yeah. You're a brand. Setting uh, myself as a brand. And, 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 you, and you don't have an agency. You do your no. own thing. 
Yeah, I'm a, 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 I negotiate with international businesses mm -hmm. on both the accounting, the, the agency side, um, the, 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 mm -hmm. the, the issues of marketing. So I'm, I'm single-handedly, mm -hmm. I, I handle all of those things for myself. Mm -hmm. All of yourself? No yeah. agents? Okay. No agents. All right, okay. So you, you are one of those persons who work with the big phones out there. Good. A tough cookie. You know how, thank you, um, the Young Kentish Rogers. Thank, thank you. Again, thank you very much for having me. me. And thanks for your, your conversation, all right? Yes. So, folks, our time here now, we are just about 20 minutes down after 12 o'clock. That's the firm at 2.9. DJ Ham, I'm here in your company for uh, 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 this lovely, lovely, lovely um, afternoon. You hold the spot. You've got class firm in a bit. Uh, we'll continue shortly, yes? Suckle Fudge will be here with you on the decks next, all right? On our deck here. <laughs> Magic City goes dark on Friday, November 1st. Join our sports.